Sign up for Bluehost today and get your own cyberspace for just $3.95 a month. Just go to mysite.thefakest.com to get started. Welcome to The Fake Cast, the official podcast for KCOM Studios, The Fakest, where we discuss the stories behind the fake news. My name is Leanne, and I'm the executive producer in charge of production here at The Fakest. And for this first episode, I was able to get the face of The Fakest, Paul Defoe, to sit down with me for a chat about his fake news experience. Breaking the fake news for real. From KCOM Studios in somewhere west of New York City, this is The Fakest, and it starts now. Thanks for taking the time to do this, Paul. I've been begging you to do it forever. It really just kind of worked out. We had a, uh, a a death in the fakest family, and things have just been so crazy here around KCOM Studios that I was like, hey, it, what about that bullshit idea Leanne had? Let's go ahead and do that. And, you know, so here we are doing it, which is, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I don't know, do people actually listen to these things, or are they just sort of like archived to fill up, you know, Amazon Cloud storage? Well, it is a, a new format for people to consume news, so why not be part of the experience with fake news? I feel like fake news should have a part in the platform. That's fair. I, I, how new is it, though? I mean, it, when did podcasting start, Leanne? Because, I, I mean, I'm an old school broadcasting kind of guy, and you know, I really don't have time for sitting around and playing on Facebook and Insta on my phone and everything. So how long have podcasts been around? Well, I mean, it goes back to the days of radio and how people used to use audio for all of their news consumption. And so I can assume. So like 1947? uh, We're talking here 1937? Actually, it goes back to the uh, War of the Worlds, the the best fake news radio broadcast that there was. Uh, so I, I think. Oh, well, uh, I mean, that, we all learned about it in journalism school. That's right. That was a very important step in the industry of fake news. I know that that was something that was part of my journey into fake news was the uh, the Orson Welles uh, news story that freaked out all of America. So um, I, I attribute podcasting all the way back to the the days of radio and and how important that was so orson, orson audio wells is di- isn't he the guy who invented the 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 sled yeah he invented the sled and he had a special name for it uh because it was an important part of uh the the workings of the sled so if you had that special name that you know it had a, a device that went inside to make the sled go faster i think he did invent the sled and uh it it should be called the orson wells sled but they just you know they just call it sleds nowadays well, maybe maybe we should just be calling this the Orson Welles cast. Well, I mean, we could talk about Orson Welles for, for a long time, but I guess since oh, well, I, I talked can. about I can't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can. I can't. Well, that's part of my journey into the world of fake news. So let's since we're here to sit down and talk to you, since you finally let me do this podcast interview with you. Let's talk about your history and your origins in, in since news stories and even fake news stories have background information. Every good news story and every good fake news story has background information. Let's get background information on you. So, Paul Defoe, where did you come from? Where did you uh, happen to uh, be born? Where Where did you live? Where uh, did you grow? How did you grow up? That's a lot of questions. Um, I let's see. I I came. Uh, I I don't want to get too graphic, but I came from my mother. <laughs> uh, it, it was a uh, dark winter evening, January 1982. There was 17 feet of snow on the ground. My father, uh, Monteper Defoe, hiked 7,000 miles with a pair of snowshoes, uh, carrying my mother to get us to the hospital so I could be born. So, you know, a humble beginning, not very notable. But from there, I have grown into maybe the most prominent awarded, respected, uh, attracted to lovely fake news journalists in the world. Really, it started a few years ago, maybe five or six years ago. I was, uh, well, Leanne, I I don't like to talk about this really, but I come from money. Uh, My family's loaded, you know, so naturally they wanted me to get a job in finance as as a stockbroker. Very much, I, I respect Monteper Defoe, which is what my father makes me call him. I respect Monteper Defoe's, uh, you know, opinion, and I respect his bank account. So I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to go in the family business. And I, you know, went to stock school 
And uh, it was, that's what they call it, right? Stock school? St- that's that's what I've heard. Yeah, you either learn to trade stocks or deal in stock photography. That's what they teach at stock school. So I, I went to stock school and, and I, I went to the family business and I did really, really well. I mean, I, I had the trust fund already, but I, I added 10% to it over the course of a couple of years, which is pretty good considering how large it was. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't really following my heart. When I was a child, a lonely, lonely child in a large, large mansion where my, my mother and father were always out doing social events and working and taking vacations without me and going to amusement parks without me and really just doing whatever they could to be without me. I would sit at home and I would watch the news. Report warnings to much of the valley because of the swiftly rising water there. There was this journalist where I grew up. His name was Jim Ward. He, he was this very old journalist, but he was amazing. He worked for this station and they were very concerned with ratings, with, with television ratings. They wanted their newscast to be the most highly rated newscast within the DMA. So a lot of times what they do, pretty ingenious, They would go out to these sites of news stories and they would have producers run around and cause all sorts of havoc. They're on a murder scene. They're going to plan evidence. They're at a robbery. They're going to break a window across the street. So it looks like there's a rash of robberies in the neighborhood. You know, they're reporting on snowfall. They're going to pull a clip from the 1980s film Better Off Dead in the snow and use that instead of the piddling snow that's out on the pavement out on the street. You get what I'm saying? They would fake the news So they could get more money because they had more ratings and they could sell more ads based on those ratings. It it was eye opening to me as a child. I was like, wait a second, you can lie and people will give you more money the more you lie. Mind blowing. Now, Montepere Defoe, he 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 wanted me to go into finance, as I said, and it, it was hard because he had a bunch of money he wanted to give me if I pursued the professional dreams that he had for me. But at the same time, I had this dream in my heart for fake news. So eventually I reached a breaking point. I was sitting there in front of my stock computer, trading in my stocks and my stock images. I, you know what? I said, screw it. You know what? I have money now. I'm going to go start my own fake news empire. And that's what I did. And here we are, and it's super successful. And I'm, I'm really kind of a national hero. So I think it all kind of worked out. That's a great background story of Jim Ward. It was very forward thinking of him to embellish stories for ratings and money. Because uh, who cares about the truth? Who wants to know what actually happened? People don't want that. They want they want some fabricated stories to, to, to keep their day rolling. So he was a legend in the business and was way before his time. Definitely. I mean, he, he just he recently retired after 50 years behind the anchor desk. Now, I'm not sure what percentage of those years were uh, used to make fake stories and which were used to report on real news, which why would you do that? But suffice it to say, I think that, uh, you know, Jim Ward, probably one of the best fake news broadcasters until I showed up on the scene. I mean, I put him to shame, but he was really, really good before I got there. The, the student has become the master. Definitely. The fake news for real with more reporters covering more fake stories. Excuse me, Ella Fitzpatrick with the fakest. For the fakest, Martin Zendler. Catch Birdman Stan on the fakest. He takes the lazy eye in the sky right into the heart of the action. Bernie McFerty. Great. Huber Stafford. Byron Seals. From the mythical weather crisis center. Grim Ace here. Grab my new album, The Choices, by me, Jake Stein. Coming June 18th. Um, to let's Apple. talk about the news team here at KCOM Studios. I'm usually stuck in the control room, so I don't get, I don't get a lot of time, a lot of face time with the reporters. Tell tell our audience about some of these these people that you've hired to to bring on and and be the storytellers. Well, Leanne, that's a very difficult question because I mean it changes all the time. I I mean we have a few mainstays that have been here with us forever, like Grace Hooper, Stafford, and Byron Seals, the weatherman. Who can keep track of all these people coming and going. I mean, it, the people that we have are very, very, very good. Grace Hooper Stafford, I, I think, is probably my favorite just because of of her journey as, as a fake news journalist. Hold on, this sounds like a report opportunity to me. Report opportunity. 
not a lot of people know this. She doesn't like to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it because, well, I, I have to keep talking on this thing. You know, she went to journalism school and she was having trouble getting the, the funding to finish her last year. She went down to the local strip club and she became this really great stripper. Uh, she, she was known for her ability to hang off the, uh, the stripper pole for a full 10 minutes in a completely still pose, mimicking the Venus de Milo. It, it was amazing. Whatever you're going to do, be the best at it. Exactly. And I think, you know, all the, those years, you know, spent on that pole really helped inform her, her journalistic sensibilities, which is why, you know, a few years ago, uh, after after some crazy HR stuff, we decided to put her on the socio-political beat because skills that you learn in a strip club can be directly applied to Washington, D.C. and all sorts of socio-political issues. It's them protester types better move their butts before I pepper their pies. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the fakest news team, we sadly recently lost someone very special to our news team. Um, And I heard uh, through the grapevine that you had had a little bit of uh, falling out with Birdman Stan. Who told you that? I'm not at liberty to say uh, this. This was a confidential source. And because we are fake news journalists. I mean, I'm your boss. Uh, if you don't tell me, you know, technically I could fire you. I'm not saying I'm going to because that would be legally actionable. But even as fake news journalists, we have to have some kind of standards, Paul. Well, you know, I don't want to speak too much about the Birdman stand situation just because, well, it makes me look bad. Me and Stan... We were friends for years and years and years. You know, ever since I brought him on, we, we've been tight. You know, uh, we'll go out for lunch during the week. He'll come over to my house and, you know, hang out, have a couple brewskis, you know, on the weekends, things like that, uh, before he hops back in his helicopter, which for some reason he always was drinking before he got in his helicopter. I mean, if anyone's responsible for staying crashing, it's probably him and his really hardcore drinking problem. It's hard, though, because he was my only, well, my my very, very good friend, not my only friend, but one of my best friends. That might be up there with one of my greatest regrets this week. And is another one of those regrets putting Stan in these dangerous situations? There was a an angry mob protesting when he was out there in his helicopter. Do you, do you feel any regret about that? Well, if you knew Stan you would know that there's no putting Stan in a situation more dangerous than his own life. Because he w- he was a man who made dangerous decisions with no outside influence whatsoever, all the time. Yes, I might have been a bit more adventurous with his, his assignments lately, but really at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of all on him, right? I mean, you've seen it yourself since you've been here. Every time he goes out in the helicopter, he's going to crash. I don't think... I or the fakest or KCOM Studios or the network who graciously helps fund KCOM Studios. I don't think any of them should feel responsible for the death of Birdman Stan. He was a, a really sweet guy, but maybe he wasn't the best helicopter pilot, I guess we could say. Uh, so uh, he, he'll, he'll be uh, missed uh, quite a bit on the show. Not the best uh, lover either, I've heard from several people within the office. So, so, you, so you also have your own confidential sources, I guess. Oh, it was Grace Super Stafford. I don't care about telling you. Okay, well, that that makes a lot of sense, given her background and where she comes from. Okay, I'm tying some uh, things together. uh, So that's that's good to know. Um, So uh, how are you holding up after after Birdman Stan's death? I mean, it's it's been really hard for me coming into work. It just you know, it's it's something that I you know, I feel bad about and I'm going to miss talking to Birdman Stan over the the intercom system in in my headset. So uh, how are how are you holding up? Are you doing all right? I'm I, I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, the hardest thing, I, I mean, the the thing that's hard on me every day, is sitting down and meeting with our KCOM Studios lawyers about this situation. I mean, it's it's taking me away from from my lunch breaks. It's taking me away from personal phone calls. It's taking me away from you know the time I spend on Reddit in the morning to kind of get into the zone before we start working on the show. It's it's taking me away from the bar 
at night. And it's just really, really hard. I mean, I, I think if anything, Stan's death has impacted me more than anybody because all my free time's gone right now. I don't even have time to casually day drink. And it's rough. He was he was a good friend. Normally, he he would be somebody I would commiserate about this with, you know, that I would I would jump in and I'd give him a call and, you know, just bitch and complain about everything going on. But I, I don't even have that. Yeah, Birdman Stan died. But the person who's really hurt in this whole situation is me. I don't even know what to say to that. Uh, I, I think that maybe you should think about Stan and his family and what they're going through and, and how much they're they're uh, going to miss him. But I guess we'll, we'll have to do something to very, you know, uh, very publicly uh, uh, remember Stan and all of his co- contributions to our fake news here at KCOM Studios. And uh, oh yeah, that's that's definitely going to be coming up. Uh, our sales team isn't going to let us get out of this tragedy without, you know, selling a few ads. So. Cats Birdman Stan on the fakest. He takes the lazy eye in the sky right into the heart of the action. Come pay tribute to fallen helicopter pilot Birdman Stan Butram in a fakest news special. Birdman Stan, fly high. Streaming live and recorded at thefakest.com. Um, and speaking of Reddit and where we get all of our news uh, so, uh, and where we get some of our news for our news broadcasts. Uh, so let's let's talk about some breaking news that we had earlier today. So there was this bizarre story of an ice cream trucks uh, of an ice cream truck that was using uh, the Baja men smash hit song. Who let the dogs out? And it's been getting dogs to come out of their homes and follow the truck. Do you, do you know anything about that? Do we have any more information about uh, about this weird story? that's been going on? As of right now, we don't have a lot of information, although I'm assuming that this ice cream truck is actually run by the Baja men themselves because, well, they sort of fell on hard times after that initial hit they had in the 2000s, and then they just kind of fell off the map. Turns out they bought this ice cream truck, and what they do is they they drive around neighborhoods luring all these dogs in sort of like a a Pied Piper of canine mischief, and so they collect all the dogs, and then they go and sell them. Anytime you, you know, walk into a grocery store and you see someone standing there with a box of puppies for five bucks a piece, that's one of the Baja men. Dog adoption is a big business that, that I could see that uh, being uh, something to pursue. So what is it about this song that is appealing to these dogs that's driving them out and, and getting them to follow the truck and, and into the Baja men's arms? Well, you or I wouldn't know this because we are not dogs. <laughs> But there's a specially encoded hypnotic sequence within the song that only dogs can hear. It's the equivalent of saying, hey, free bones and kibble for anybody who follows me over and over and over again. And even the most resilient dog will eventually end up following the truck and dancing along to the music a little bit because it's really peppy and poppy and fun. That's very technologically advanced. I'm I'm really impressed. I mean, give it up to the Baja men for figuring this out. Um, Well, I mean, they are known for their technical aptitude. That, I mean. I mean, that's that's what people tell me. Um, so the the reaction of the the people in the neighborhoods where these children are, are missing their their pet dogs, families are missing their their b- b- canine best friends. What what is the reaction of the people on the street? That what what are the what are the kids doing to to combat this? Well, luckily, from what I've heard, we've only had three confirmed uh, child suicides, which which is good. I know there's a lot of concern in the neighborhood about the dogs, but really, at the end of the day, one dog is just like another dog. It's not like they can talk. It's not like they look very different from one another, you know, species notwithstanding. So, I mean, I think these people are really just kind of bitching. And the sooner they can go and just pick up a replacement dog, the sooner the Baja men can come back and take that dog, too. Well, we had some reports that came in a little bit earlier that there were some kids who were very upset about this situation. And they had gotten on their scooters and they were chasing after the Baja men's ice cream truck. So I don't know how what's going to happen uh, with that, but there is an ongoing chase on the interstate between the scooters. The scooters are moving very fast uh, to keep up with this ice cream truck. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what's going to come of this uh, because it's still an ongoing story at this time. There actually have been some rumors that that's a secondary business that the Baja men have. They take the dogs, then the children 
chase the truck with the dogs, and then they sell the children too. You know, one side business leads into another side business leads into another side business. They've they've really gone into the big business of uh, selling children and and animals. That's a it's a dangerous, bizarre business. But I guess they're they're making it work for them since uh, they seem to be out of the music business. I guess this is what they've been pursuing since they've left the music industry. The uh, the B in MBA stands for Baja men. So that uh, that's the starting to make a lot of sense to me now. Before we wrap up, Paul, uh, what is uh, when we talk about fake news in the fake news industry? And, you know, I'm I'm new to this industry. I've only been doing this for for a little bit of time. But you've you've been doing this uh, as a career for a while and you've been loving the fake news industry and the, and the fake the concept of fake news for a long time. You've grown up with idols and mentors. So where, where do you see fake news in, in the industry going in, in, say, five years from now? Well, the official answer that I'm supposed to give is kind of modeled on Bertram KCOM's vision. You know, we want fake news to be everywhere, all around you, surrounding you, sort of suffocating you with its wonderful, wonderful information. Uh, So I hope, you know, within the next five years, we can get fake news apps installed on your phone, on your watch, in your earbuds, in your smart pillow, in your smart refrigerator, in your smart mousetraps. What what, what else do they make that's smart? Whatever they make that's smart, that's where we want to be. We want to be in your face at all times so you can't help but consume everything the fake news has to offer. Now, conversely... We also want to be the only fake news source in town. Now, a lot of people over the past two years or so have been really embracing our fake news aesthetic that we came up with, you know, minus, you know, a little bit of influence from uh, Jim Ward. And it, it really upsets me, especially when, you know, we have people like the president talking about fake news and he doesn't even mention the fakest. I mean, we are the originators of fake news. The Onion, forget about it. Click hole, whatever. Fox News, eh, maybe they were there first. But the most important thing is we were here first and we want to be the only ones left standing once this whole fad passes over. So to answer your question shortly and succinctly, one, we want to be everywhere and inescapable. Two, we want to destroy everybody who stands in our way. And this podcast, the fake cast, is part of that part of that plan, I think. And I'm I'm glad that you agreed to do this with me because I think that it helps push forward KCOM Studios and, and our, our plan for the future. Well, really, Leanne, I, I'm sorry, but I don't know if we're gonna do another one of these. I mean who even listens to podcasts? You know, I mean, how do you, how do you get them? Do you just like you text a number and they send you the podcast? So I, I, I don't know if the fake cast is going to be part of our ongoing plan to take over the world. But I, I do appreciate you filling the time for us. So we have time to put together the memorial special, which will, again, sell a bunch of ads for our company. Well, I hope you'll let me keep this going. If if if. If I can, if if I can figure out how to make it work, we can maybe do something with this. If if we want to in the future, but, Leanne, um, I'm I'm more than happy to let you continue doing the podcast as long as it's on your own time, using your own equipment, and I don't have to do it again. So you know, as long as you can fulfill those three criteria, have at it. We also won't host the episodes or build a website for them or anything. But you know, but if you can do all that too, more than happy to have you keep doing the fake cast. This gives me a lot of pro- uh, a lot of practice as a broadcaster in fake news. I've been looking up to you for a long time since I've been, you know, I came out of Alabama and I found out about the fakest and Paul Defoe and I you're you're my ment- you're my mentor. Well, well, Leanne, I I mean I mean that really that really is exactly what I expected because I knew you liked me already because, you know, we talked about all this in your job interview. Feel free to kiss the boss's ass, but I mean, maybe don't do it, you know, on a recording that's going to be released to maybe dozens of people, you know? Okay, well, I guess that maybe is the best way to close out this first and maybe last episode of the fake cast. I don't know. Uh, but uh, thank you, Paul Defoe, the, the head of the fakest, the face of the fakest, all of the body parts of the fakest. Except one. Well, we'll we won't go into that. Uh, so for uh, but thank you for joining me this week. And don't forget to all of the, the 12 listeners to this podcast episode. Don't forget to catch Fly High, the Birdman Stand Memorial. Special. And we sold the fuck out of it. So if you want really awesome stuff from the fakest in 2019, you need to check out this episode because our advertisers are waiting for you. 
Uh, but until then, I'm producer Leanne, and you've been listening to The Fake Cast. Cat's bird band stand on the fakest. He takes the lazy eye in the sky right into the heart of the action. Pay tribute to fallen helicopter pilot Birdman Stan Butram in a fakest news special. Birdman Stan, fly high. Streaming live and recorded at thefakest.com. Subscribe to The Fakest on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app by going to thefakest.com. You'll get every episode when we release it. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram by following The Fakest News. That's Fakest with an I. See you next time.